Good morning, guys. I thought I'd get onto this early this morning. Um, it's Chris from the Ultimate Recycler. We're up to part 44 of the great cleanup. There are currently five days to go. Yes, down to one hand. Uh, I'm standing down the side lane of the shop that you don't see very often. That's the north side of the shop. Christine's shop is the other side. There's a little bit of timber and stuff here I've got to get rid of today. Uh, I want to finish this lane today, so it's totally done. There's a wheelbarrow in front of me with some boxes that can go in the ute. I have to move a lot today. Uh, I've got people coming to pick stuff up tomorrow, which is exciting. We managed to sell a beautiful big cabinet in the shop uh, through Facebook. I'll show you that one shortly. There's also a guy coming to pick up one of the cedar chiffoniers on Thursday. Something else. Oh, the, we've got the guy coming to move my signs uh, tomorrow. He's going to move the signs I've got out the front of the shop over to Christine's shop. So there's lots going on, but I need to move a lot out of the yard today. And I have just advertised my two garden sheds on Facebook Marketplace for free. Let's go and have a look at those. Uh, the lady's also coming to get this pot plant stand here. So there's going to be people coming and going everywhere in the next few days. I have put this garden shed and the other one around the corner that everyone's been waiting for me to get into with the bottles on top. I've put them both on Facebook now for free. Now clearly that's put pressure on me enormously to get them empty because if someone wants to come this afternoon or tomorrow, well, I'm not going to put them off. Uh, so I'm going to start emptying that today. The sun's out. It's been a cold start, but it's not too bad. It is a little bit windy. I have to move that fridge down to the scrap metal pile. There's lots of stuff got to be moved around today. I'll try and give you a few updates throughout the day rather than just one walkthrough at the end. But um, it's still very cluttered at the back here. So it's just before lunchtime. Christine's just gone off to organise some lunch. We've put that nice big cupboard on the trailer. That's going to have a spot somewhere at home at some stage. It'll probably live in the carport for a little while. Packing up some other things here. Now these old circular saw blades i find them in old pe in you know, people's sheds all the time sometimes most of these are actually tungsten tip ones i can't really sell them because you never know if they're cracked and the the there's liability issues if you sell something that causes an injury of course uh i have i was going to throw them straight in the scrap metal but i have been my subconscious has been formulating a plan to make a cardboard shredder of some sort just really low speed uh, alternating spinning blades um, don't know I, I'm formulating in another part of my brain that I'm not conscious of and eventually we might come up with some sort of invention for shredding cardboard for the worms so I will take them home they did actually go to the scrap pile and then they came back out of it again uh, I'm trying not to rethink things that's the scrap metal pile. I'll have to ring Daniel again shortly. It's building up. I do hope he takes that big fridge because if I have to take that to the transfer station, that will cost me. The uh, the old no good furniture pile, which Steve is going to take out to his farmer friend's place. Um, it'll be on a bonfire. I don't normally like that. There's stuff there that I would normally salvage stuff off, but I just don't have a choice and I can't really handle that at the moment. And I'm really trying to avoid a load to the tip. I know that's kind of cheating a little bit, getting someone else to burn it, but... Uh, the option's there, and I don't want to pay to go to the tip. Uh, the big TV antenna, I cut the pole in half. That's to go home. Most of this stuff here will be loaded up in the last couple of days, so that's kind of organised. Uh, the blue tarp, or Coco's been having an ongoing wrestling match with that tarp. She seems to be enjoying it. Uh, so we've done a fair bit this morning. This main workshop shed is now empty, except for some empty containers there. And down that other end, I put all that flooring on Facebook for free. And there's a guy coming Thursday to take that. So that's good. Still got to finish off this shed, of course. Now, I told you I put myself under pressure with the other sheds. Well, I've got someone coming Thursday afternoon for them. And he's going to dismantle them and take them away. Uh, yes, so now we I can't avoid that shed any longer, can I? We will get a start on that today. I've just been cleaning up around here. Um, packing some aluminium saucepans and things in tubs. There's a lot of stainless steel, some really good weight there. So I'll get that ready for uh, the first or second chance I get to go to the scrapyard in Melbourne. This is thinning out a bit, so um, we are making a bit of progress. I better have some lunch while I still have some energy. Oh, well, I'll need to recoup my energy by eating something. I'll be back soon. I'm just back to this side lane now to finish cleaning this up before I tackle those little sheds. I thought we might have a look in some of these boxes. Now, I did open this before, and I wanted to show you guys something. 
Um, even though things are out of the weather in boxes, and this had a tarp over it as well, just the damp air and the humidity here will rust things. It's a bit of a shame. That's a nice Stanley plane. It will clean up, but it probably wasn't that rusty when I put it in here. So you can see the condensation just on the screwdrivers. It's quite cold here. So the moisture gets in. Yeah, look at that. So that's a bit of a shame. I, I shouldn't let that happen. These planes will clean up okay, but they certainly have rusted. You know, that's, so that's not good. Anyway, there's still some value there for me. I'll take that home. Uh, that will go into the emergency storage shed. I haven't looked in these two, so let's have a look together. And we're probably going to have the same problem. Hopefully nothing has rusted that was particularly good. Oh, well, that's just an empty box with a bit of mould in it now. Cute little box. Nice vintage timber box. So it's worth probably hitting with a pressure washer or taking to the car wash. Uh, and even though it's damp and mouldy, it will dry it in the sun. And someone will still buy that. Probably about $10 or so. Now, this one is also a quite a heavy galvanised steel box. Let's move the wheelbarrow frame out of the road. Now, I don't know what's in this. I haven't looked in this one. So we'll have a look together. Oh, that's disappointing. But anyway, it's, it's a good heavy gauge galvanised steel. Oh, it's almost a suitcase. Uh, would get $20 for that without any problems, so that's okay. What have we got underneath it? Well, it looks like some sort of pulley or a wheel off a, like a some of the coal mining carts or mining carts ran on tracks. It looks like a wheel. This looks like a drill, a vertical mount. Oh, no, it's not. I think this was actually a floorboard clamp. I talked about these in one of another video a little while back. Yes, it is. So you'd clamp this part onto the bearer of the floor when you're, when you're replacing floorboards. And then this actually winds and it pushes this plunger out and it squashes all the floorboards up so that the tongue and groove joins are nice and tight. They normally come in pairs. Uh, that's a pretty good one, but I don't know if I've got another one. It might be in the other box. Let's unpack a bit more of this one. Now, these are, what's it say, Camber. These are actually the guillotine part of one of those old shop counter paper dispensers you know a big roll of brown paper and this part rested on top of the paper and you kind of tore the paper off a bit like you'd tear some cling wrap from a roll uh, there was two of those i think i'm not sure where i put the oh here's the other one and that's off a smaller one also branded canberra uh, we have a set of old scales here and it doesn't matter that these are a bit rusty it looks like it's lost half of the support for the tray but um, with a clean up and a coat of clear, clear lacquer, that rusted look actually looks quite good. We have a large enamel bowl here. It's a good heavy gauge one. A lot of the enamel where you see in shops now is more modern and you can tell by the weight of it. This one's a very heavy bowl. That would probably sell for at least $10 with just a bit of a quick wash up. Uh, quick go the shears, uh, shearing shears. I usually get about $10 for those. Those are a large size. We have a salter iron, which sell really well as book stops or door stops, or bookends, I mean, or door stops. Probably $15 on that one. What else have we got here? An old iron. It's a spirit iron. These are pe petrol, I think they ran off. So uh, that's in pretty good nick, actually. That will clean up quite well. So this timber box had stuff in with a couple of tarps over. And it hasn't gone as rusty because because it's not a metal box. You don't get the condensation. They're very nice old hinges. They feel like they're seized up, but they'll be well worth freeing up. Oh, there's three of them. Wouldn't they make an excellent, excellent timber door with three of those beautiful old hinges? So they'll clean up quite well. I would, I would probably price those three at $30, even just the way they are. Oh, there's the other bracket for the scales. And the last piece in here is a, a sliding tap. I think these are called a honey tap for um, dispensing treacle or honey. They have a brass sleeve that slides down 
on a sort of a pivoting action and it's spring loaded in the end there so a nice little tap there that's probably a twenty dollar tap as well the box is just a, a fruit crate not much value in that no advertising in it and underneath we have some more scales that's a nice cool tray for some scales and often these tin trays rust out so it's nice to see one complete and these scales very rusty but yeah pretty cool they'll be worth cleaning up uh, another pulley wheel what else is in here oh a few more irons oh there's a pair of those wheels uh, i'm not sure what that looks like oh that's part of the paper paper dispenser that's one end and it looks like the other end's there so we might actually actually be able to bolt that to a bracket a timber piece on the bottom put a piece of dowel in the middle and put our little guillotine piece on we can actually make up one of those complete and they sell pretty well usually at least fifty dollars some more irons and i'm not sure what this is it looks like a bell oh i reckon that's the bell off a separator of a milk separator or cream separator they usually had a bell on them to ding once every oh i forget now it, you had to get the right speed and the bell had to ding every 10 seconds or something. I forget the actual time, but it was a way to, for your, the hand cranker to regulate the speed of it. So I reckon that's what it was. Okay, I better pack this up and throw it in the ute. It's all stuff to take home. There's quite a bit of value here once it's cleaned up and uh, reassembled in some cases. And I'm quite aware that this video is going to go a bit longer than I'd planned, but have a look at this. Excellent job done, finished. Um, all there is at the front is a little bit of stock that I will put out on the weekend but basically this side lane is finished uh, so what we have to do in this video well what I have to do now you guys won't have to you can skip to the next part I have to take the Uton trailer home and put these other few things back down the lane and unload that and hopefully I'll get back here with enough light left to start on those little sheds because I said I would before this video is finished it's five o'clock we're rapidly running out of light uh, it gets dark pretty early these days so let's have a bit of a peek in this shed i'm not going to get much done but we will at least start so there's a big heavy sheet of perspex or acrylic which i'll take home because you guessed it it might be handy one day a piece of tin can go to the scrap guy who has rang me back by the way or messaged me back and he's coming tomorrow all right what have we got in here we have some crates of bottles i knew there were some bottles in here so there's going to be some good shop stock i don't think there's anything particularly old i can see a few coke bottles a few 60s there's a, a passiona there's an, a local shepherd and milk bottle so there's going to be some good saleable bits and pieces in there there looks like a bit of timber work. Some of this stuff has been stashed in here for a long time. That's an oil box. Hopefully they haven't got any rot in them. Uh, this shed hasn't had a door attached for a long time. And it just got used to put things out of the weather. There's also some boxes of saucepan lids and things which will just go for scrap now. Some teapots. I will keep the teapots because these little aluminium teapots from the 60s and 70s they're usually a swan brand teapot uh yes that's a swan brand six cup uh they often just need lids and sometimes i just throw oh, look there's a lid in there already that probably fits that one and that will be probably a 15 dollar teapot so they're too good to throw to scrap what else is in there some more crates there's foam boxes that i used to use for packaging for ebay oh this is as far as i can been in this shed for a while uh, it looks like there's a big roll of foam I used for packing uh, we might try and give that away I don't know what's in the boxes at the back I do know from memory I do know there is a an old shearing plant engine in here which is a pretty nice old piece uh, there's a cutlery canteen it might be just the box uh, there's more lids more lids and you guessed it more lids so i'm not probably going to drag too much out now oh we have a bag of electrical wire there we go i've got something out 
these I'll take actually one, this tarp home because I need to cover up a couple of things I've left out in the weather cardboard boxes are just going to be recyclable this plastic is broken down in the sun so we can't do anything with that that'll have to go in the bin soft plastics are recyclable but when they get to this stage they're not or at least they're not through normal processes uh, a bit of pine timber let's drag that out I can also see some of these bed rails uh, they used to sell really well but I no one seems to want them in more antique beds aren't worth what they used to be I might put them in the pile for the scrappy uh, I know a lot of farmers actually cut the ends off and use the angle line it's very good steel uh, what's down here you can probably see better through the camera it tends to highlight where it's dark I'm not even sure. There's some old seats there. They will just be a metal frame, probably scrap. There's been some mice or rats through here. Some old magazines that the weather's got to. All right, I'm going to drag out a couple of boxes of bottles because it won't matter if they're outside. It's not supposed to rain, but uh, we are getting a lot of frosty mornings and quite heavy dew, so things do get wet. But I'll drag a few out and we'll have a quick look before we finish up. Okay, 10 minutes of pulling stuff out of the shed does constitute starting on this shed today. So um, please no, no um, grizzling about not fulfilling my legal obligations. Uh, let's have a look. There was a lot more bottles here than I thought. And there's more in there. Now that's a local Euroa one. That's a fairly valuable one. 26 fluid ounces. So it's pre about 1974 they changed in Australia to metric. Um, and that's in pretty good nick. I would think that's probably at least a $50 bottle. There's quite a few here from, I think JB were from Yarrawonga, which was a, let me see on the back, Cobram. So yeah, up along the border of Victoria and New South Wales. Now these ceramic label bottles, there's a nice Seymour one. Uh, they're a baked on label, and I think they're a good investment for the future because they're, um, they're very collectible now. That's not, that's just an embossed one from somewhere else. Uh, I think because you don't dig them up in good condition, you know, bottle collectors can go out digging up bottles and if you find a whole heap of the one type and they were rare, then the value will drop. But the only good ceramic label bottles around are um, pretty much in collections now or just in sheds. No one's going to dig up a whole haul of them in good nick because the label breaks down in the soil. So, yeah, there's some reasonable ones in here, all embossed. Uh, this one, there's a bit of a selection here, all sorts. That's not quite as good a condition. This is an older one. This is probably a hat dye, uh, what they'd call an ice blue colour, circa 1910. So fairly common, but a nice old bottle, genuine antique. Coke bottles, this is in fluid ounces, so it's probably in the 60s, maybe early 70s. Coke stuff's always collectible, even though they're very, very common. I never have any trouble selling Coke bottles. So yeah, nothing outstanding. Oh, have a look at these. I did notice this crate was a bit heavier when I lifted it out. Cons was a Bendigo and Swan Hill company. 1960s again. And these are still full. Original caps. So that's excellent. They'll be great stock for the shop. Nice to see the original little screw cap lids on them because the collectors like those as well. So yeah, some good stuff there. As for the lids, well... There's lids galore. Some of them will go straight to the aluminium pile. I will keep some lids, especially some of these older, early enamel lids. They're worth hanging on to. Uh, same with the, the tin ones off canisters. So, uh, yeah, I'll have to sort them out tomorrow. All right, we'll call it quits for today. Nothing will hurt out here if it gets damp. And we have to try and empty the shed tomorrow because it's being picked up on Thursday. Okay guys, we'll wind up this video. It's gone for quite a long time. Christine's with me. In my <laughs> <We're>, jail suit. <laughs> she <laughs> looks like she's just got out of jail. Um, we're in the shop tonight. We've just come back this evening again like we've been doing just about every night. Uh, this is the cabinet that I mentioned earlier that I've sold. Uh, it's I sold it for $750. I did have $1,000 on it in the shop. I was going to take it home. We had a chat about it and there really wasn't anywhere at home where it was going to go. Plus, it's so heavy to move. So I'm happy to take 750. People come in first thing in the morning. Uh, they've actually hired a car trailer. So they're pretty serious. We'll probably take the doors off so that we can move it. 
So anyway, um, we'll wind up this video now. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, next video tomorrow, we'll get back into that shed and see what treasures we can find. I'll see you then. Bye for now.